Hi there, folks. This is Levi Kuhn at Kuhn Truck and RV, your Class B and B Plus RV specialist. Please check out our website at truckandrv.com. That's truckandrv.com to view all of our inventory. We'll put a direct link to this particular RV in the description below. If you follow that link, it's going to take you over to our website where you can see the pricing and the information on this unit. However, once this unit is sold, that link will be removed as that web page is no longer live. We are a full service dealer. We do offer warranty as well as financing packages. If you have any questions on those, give us a call in our office at 419-899-2020. For sale today, we have a 2007 Road Trek 210 Popular with 52,000 miles. Alrighty, folks, it's time for the inside portion of today's video tour. We are inside of this 2007 Road Trek 210 Popular. As always, I'm going to start at the front, then make my way towards the rear of the coach. We're then going to come back towards the front. I'm going to try to achieve to get you a few different angles so you can get a feel for the overall space as well as the overall condition of this unit. We are a small family-owned and operated dealership. My father started this business back in 1976. Myself and my brother Luke. Brother Luke have taken over the day-to-day -day operations. So if you stop in here, you're more than likely going to meet me or Luke. We do consider ourselves to be a no-pressure sales place. We welcome you to take as much time as you'd like touring this one or any one of our RVs. We want you to be happy and content with your purchase. We're more than glad to give you a full demonstration of how to use this or any one of our RVs before you purchase it. So that way you feel comfortable going out on your first trip. All three of these front seats here are leather. All of them are in excellent condition. The front passenger seat here, along with the front driver's seat, both of these seats do swivel. And I went ahead and swiveled this chair to kind of give you a better look at how this works. Uh, this chair can swivel on around and face the rear of the coach if you want to use these front chairs as your lounging chairs. Uh, the driver's seat will not swivel quite as much uh, because the seat back is going to sit, hit the steering wheel here. So that one is a little bit limited as far as it is as, as to far how far it can swivel around. Uh, this third bed up here, whether this is going to be achieved, Road Trek did offer a mattress kit. I have not seen uh, too many of those that people purchased. Uh, it is something that you could easily make. Um, we have not made any here. We don't necessarily have the time to uh, work on small hobby projects like that. Uh, but essentially what their mattress kit was was a board, uh, two boards or three boards. They would span this distance here. And then they had another board that actually flipped out and another board that flipped out that way with uh, some padding attached to it to act as a small mattress. I do believe that it was fairly expensive through Road Tricks, so many people did uh, elect to get that mattress kit. Um, the way that the, you can do it with this um, is you actually, this back cushion here lifts up and off, um, and then you're gonna use that to span this gap between these two seats to create a bed here. How big of a person can sleep here? Uh, this is really more intended for a small adult or a child um, here. To the edge of this, to the back of the, if you remove the cushion to the to the wall where the restroom is there, is about 5 feet 10 inches or so. Um, if you don't mind your feet hanging over, or if you made your own mattress kit, you could make that uh, mattress longer up into this area where you could potentially sleep a 6, 6, 2, maybe even a 6, 4 person if you manufactured your own mat mattress kit and became uh, inventive with how you're gonna make this bed. Uh, this chair can swivel to face inwards or you can also use it to face um, the outside. I think it's actually better to have the chair the other direction with the bottom facing the door because it lines up a little bit better and straighter, more straight. Straighter is not a word I don't believe, but more straight with the rear cushion there. Okay, um, enough about that. We have a fire extinguisher down there. We have a series of three drawers there, and then this um, piece here does pull out. If you need a little bit extra counter space when you're in the kitchen cooking or prepping or getting ready, uh, you can also use this for your table here. Uh, when you have these front chairs swiveled, this would also act as your, that's just a little bit of dirt on there, uh, this would act as your table up front here. Another drawer here. We have some storage underneath the kitchen counter there. I'm not going to open all the cabinets for time's sake. Uh, we do have Corian countertops. Single basin kitchen sink with chrome faucet. Has the cover, so you can put that on there if you're not using the sink when you need that extra counter space. Uh, two burner cooktop is located behind, below this one. Again, when you don't need to use the cooktop, put the cover down and, and that acts as extra counter space. We've got a nice stainless backsplash behind that cooktop. Mirror door up here. Uh, these are Skeeter beaters. These are um, um, uh, 
screen type thing that I think goes over the inside windows. Uh, if you follow through and watch the outside portion of the video, uh, you'll see that the back one is installed inside the back rear doors. Shoes are a little squeaky because it's nice and clean in here. We've got another second fire extinguisher there. Uh, this switch here is for the inverter, which is going to turn on the inverter. This inverter is only used mainly primarily to power the television. Uh, it, this switch works for the outlet behind the TV. You could plug something else into that outlet, but it does not uh, power all the outlets in this coach. I get that question asked a lot. Owning 2,800 generators, showing 107 hours. Water heater switch. Our levels gauges, if we hold this one, it's going to light up our gauges to show us how much is in each of our tanks. Water pump switch. And then our battery disconnect. Uh, fuse breaker and circuit... Or fuse panel and circuit breakers. Got that mixed up there. Oftentimes get asked what this switch is a lot as well. This one is going to operate the porch light that is located outside of the coach. Coming into the kitchen area, uh, being the 210, they did offer a larger fridge in these. This is still a three-way refrigerator. Um, you might think that this thing has some scratches and stuff in it, but it actually still has the plastic um, cellophane or whatever you want to call it on the face of this. Um, so whoever bought this new must have been one of those picky people that did not take that off. Uh, so you can take that off and that's going to look probably just like brand new. Uh, again, nice large fridge freezer, bigger than your 190s and some of the other 210s that had the smaller fridge. Uh, freezer compartment up top. This is a three-way, so it'll run on 110 volt electricity, 12 volt electricity, or propane gas. Directly above that is a half-time microwave slash convection oven, so you can bake in that as well as do your microwaving. In the 210 model, uh, Road Trek offered two different styles of baths. They have this one, which is the much, much, much more popular uh, version or rendition of their restroom because this is actually a, it gives you the most versatility. Um, this can be used as a fully enclosed wet bath where you still do have the option of the aisle shower. Uh, the other option would be strictly just the aisle shower. You're not gonna have an enclosed wet bath. Uh, so this is probably the number one reason uh, that this coach is gonna sell quick. Um, is this enclosed wet bath people always love these and they seem to be a little less common than the aisle shower system shower valve up there shower head up there a mirrored wall there bathroom sink the sink faucet there is going to operate the shower as well as the sink a little bit of storage below that and then your stool this is a formed fiberglass drain pan in here Drain is on the back side of the toilet that we cannot see uh, from where we're standing. Shower curtain is here. There is a track here that you're going to pull this across the door there. Um, and this also does still op offer the option of showering in the aisle if you sh so choose to do so. The way that you're going to do that is you're going to continue to pull that shower curtain out and around this track. The door's really creaking at me. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but... It's driving me crazy. It's slowly moving. Um, the shower curtain is going to pull out and around that track. You can turn on that fantastic fan to pull any steam, hot air, exhaust the shower or the toilet while you're using the stool. Um, if you pull that curtain around out there, you're actually going to stand in the aisle right here. This trench drain here is where the water would drain to. And this whole sunken uh, gray area is a fiberglass form drain plan, just like all of the other Road Trek 190s, 210s. Um, all that is intended to design to slope towards that trench drain that I showed you there. Uh, so this is the most popular, the most desired uh, restroom setup in this because you can close this door, do your business and keep it all inside the closet, but you still have the versatility if you need a little more room or just want a little more space. When you take your shower, you have the option of leaving that door open and, and creating a little larger space outside. Uh, being the popular floor plan, the way that this is intended to sleep is... Uh, north to south in this unit. This is a power sofa bed. So if we hold the switch, the sofa here is going to run down by itself. So this is intended, again, being a popular, it's intended to sleep north and south, so you're going to sleep one person here and then one person there. I'm going to stop and grab some measurements and we'll jump back in. So this bed setup back here, you do have a couple different options with this. Again, as I said, this is being a popular, it is intended to kind of sleep north and south. Um, the measurements here, you're going to be about 6'2 from the wall 
on either side to there. Um, that if you're a six, two or under, that's going to be the preferential way to sleep for most people, uh, because they can leave this section here open. Uh, when they have to get up in the middle of the night to use the restroom, you can kick your feet out and get out of the bed pretty easily without uh, disturbing your partner or uh, travel buddy. Um, this also can sleep. Uh, you could sleep crossways. I do not have the extra cushion, but the table is located right here. Uh, you can use that table and it will sit on this uh, silver ledge there from either side. Um, you can then get yourself a cushion or a foam mattress topper and fill in this area here to make a one large huge bed back here. Uh, if you do that, the sleeping options for you could be uh, one, two, and if you don't mind cuddling, you could sleep a third person here down to the center. But that also allows you to sleep crossways back here in this unit. Um, you could sleep crossways if it's just one of you. You're probably not going to want to sleep two people there. It'd be a little small. Uh, but this opens up the versatility of being able to sleep crossways. Um, this back wall kind of curves. Uh, you'll see that on the outside. But right here, I took a measurement. Uh, side to side in this unit, you have 82 inches. So if you're taller, taller than 6'2", that's going to be the best option for you to sleep crossways across here. Uh, feet down underneath this cabinet with your head over here, kind of beside the TV or underneath the TV here a little bit. Uh, plenty of space there for your head. Uh, but you have 82 inches from that wall to that wall at this point. Uh, up in here, it's more like 80-ish because this back wall does kind of curve in there. So several different sleeping options uh, with this bed set up back here. Um, I hope that wasn't too confusing. If you have any questions on that, please call, text, email, and we will try to clarify that for you. Uh, this one does have the Cool Cat heat pump. That heat pump is going to give you electric heat down to a certain outside ambient temperature, which I have found to be is roughly 40 degrees. Below 40 degrees, you got to turn on the propane furnace. Cool Cat heat pump is also going to give you air conditioning as well. This one here is intended to be your wardrobe. We have one of these little uh, windshield sun visors there that we left in there for you that we're never going to use. Uh, if you want it, you can use it. There are the Road Trek manuals. Storage overhead. Anywhere. TV remotes right there. Anywhere and everywhere that uh, Road Trek can use for storage. There's our outside shower hose. Um, Road Trek does try to take advantage of all that space to use it for storage. Uh, the TV. I'll show you one last cabinet here does have surround sound. Um, this here is your DVD player, and that there is your amplifier that's going to distribute the audio to the surround sound throughout this coach. Uh, both side windows do open. The lower portion here opens. That lower portion is screened. It uh, kind of cranks and tips out a little bit. Again, lower portion is screened and does open. Thermostat for the Cool Cat heat pump air conditioning and your propane for furnace all combined on one. Speakers, if you didn't see those yet, those are the speakers for the surround sound. Uh, we do have a couple of shoulder belts back here. One there and one there. With a uh, shoulder belt on the third jump seat. So I see a total of one, two, three, four, five. I see a total of five seat belts in this unit. How many South Americans does it take to change a light bulb? A Brazilian outlet there. These little guys here are cup holders, curtains on those, speakers for your surround sound. A 24 inch flat screen TV there is on a swivel mount. So you can pull that around and swing it towards the front. If you want to do your lounging up front and be able to watch your um, TV still. Noxious gas detector, another outlet there. Switch for your power sofa bed. Cushions back here are all in fantastic condition. Uh, carpeting is also very clean. Another noxious gas detector there. Again, this whole gray area there is your fiberglass form drain pan if you're going to use that aisle shower at all. Again, the little bubbles on the fridge there are the cellophane or plastic wrap that they put on those from the factory. Peel that off. I'm not going to peel it off because some people like to uh, my wife finds that enjoyable. She likes, I can't open anything at home. She always wants to open packages and I'm like, let me see if it works before you take everything off and apart. And if we want to keep it and man, she just opens it. And so I'm not going to do that just to keep her happy. I guess that, Hey, maybe you're the one that wants to peel that off of there again. Fantastic fan in the ceiling. 
We have a really, really nice clean coach here. Uh, furnace is located underneath that seat. I am gonna call this thing a nine and a half out of 10, a 2007 model year road track 210 popular. Outside shined up very nicely, interior cleaned up very, very well. Overall, just a very nice clean coach. Calling it a nine and a half. All loaded up up front here, power windows, locks, tilt, cruise, power mirrors, CD player. We have a trailer hitch brake there. If you wanna pull a small trailer, these are rated for around 5,000 ish pounds. Don't quote me exactly, we can pull up the, uh, Road Trek still has their brochures on their website that we can pull up and see what they have them rated at. If my memory serves me correctly, it's around 5,000 pounds. If you have any questions on this one, give us a call at Coon Truck and RV, the best little RV dealer around since 1976. Alrighty folks, we're gonna run around the outside of this Road Trek 210 Popular. We are 22 feet from bumper to bumper. We have four brand new tires, an 11 foot awning, this does it on the Chevy 3500 chassis. It is powered by the six liter Vortec V8 engine. Uh, very nice, clean exterior on this one. Uh, stripes are in good condition. There's a few minor spots that I'll point out, uh, but overall the outside of this coach is in excellent condition. Vents here for the propane furnace. We have our two coach batteries and a slide out tray. These are both brand new and they are six volt batteries that are hooked into a series to give you your 12 volt, you'll actually get more runtime out of two six volts than you will out of two 12 volts. Uh, here is a uh, couple of outlets there, if there's something you wanna plug in outside. A storage drawer slides out here on the passenger's rear corner. Again, very nice exterior on this one. Shoot from the back here a little bit because it's kind of hard to see with the reflection from the sun. A little bit of flaking on the top edge of this stripe right here. The rest of it is in good shape. Just that top edge right there. Coming around to the back of the coach, we do have our tow package down bottom. This little door here opens, which gives you access to your propane tank. Don't normally open the back doors, but I'm going to open them on this one because I want you to see the screen uh, that somebody had installed it in this. So as you can see, uh, there's a zipper here with a big screen in the back here. If you want to leave these back doors open for some airflow, uh, you can do that and still keep the bugs out of this coach as well as your spare tire is right there. And this is where most of them are stored, but there's your awning tools. Uh, Spinner Sport Rafter and your crank arm. Heck, while we're in here, uh, you're going to fill the one of the onboard water tanks right there. Coming around to the driver's side of the coach. Again, nice and straight, clean, shiny, very, very nice coach. Road Trek 210 popular. We have another slide out tray here on the driver's side corner. Yellow cord there is our shore power cord which is gonna hook into this outlet right here. This here is our outside shower. The uh, faucet for that is inside inside one of the cabinets. We've got a cable TV hookup. Then this here is our city water connection. We've got our gasoline tank. Uh, the generator on this unit is mounted up. You can see the bottom corner of it there. Uh, mounted just behind the rear axle. That is where the spare tire normally would be on a Chevy Express van. That's why the spare tire is located inside that one and the upper one are vents and access to your refrigerator vent and access to our water heater a nice large slide out storage tote or tub here uh, this lid closes so that is an enclosed compartment got a couple of fittings there for our sewer again as you can see nice large storage tub there this one does have the macerator pump gray valve black valve you can open those and then your hose for the macerator pump is coiled up in there.